Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk comic books for a little bit. We're going to talk about IDW. And I have to give a shout out to CCG, you know who you are, who sent me this article today. I did not see this. I actually wasn't aware that this had happened, but it makes complete sense. IDW has let go of some of its employees permanently. Now, this won't shock anyone who's been following the situation with IDW. They are in a uh, bad place financially. They have been for quite some time, for the last couple of years. And disclaimer, I used to do some work for IDW. Uh, now, it's been four or five years since I did work for IDW, but I did have a pretty positive experience with them. I really didn't have any complaints about uh, working with folks over IDW. Now, my editors are no longer with the company. They bailed, I think, when uh, IDW started having financial problems. Now, here's the thing, though. I don't think this is new. I think IDW was just very, very good at hiding uh, some of the pain behind the scenes because I used to have a hard time getting paid. That's the only complaint I ever had about IDW is I had to chase them sometimes for three or four months to get paid as a freelancer. And being a freelancer, you know, you can't really <laughs> you can't really uh, live on air for three or four months. Right. Uh, so anyway, IDW let go of employees permanently. And uh, we're going to talk about this because I think that this is going to be one of the first comic book publishers to fold. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest. IDW has been hemorrhaging money. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, if you want a blow by blow of all the problems that IDW has been having, you might want to go out and check out that umbrella guy tug on YouTube. He has done a lot of videos on IDW. I dip in occasionally because uh, we are kind of keeping track of the comic book industry. Uh, generally speaking, how things are doing, uh, especially with the coronavirus shutdown. And again, I did work for IDW, so I can kind of, you know, come out from that angle. And uh, here we are. But uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I did a video talking about how G.I. Joe and Transformers uh, we're on pause. Uh, Larry Hama's G.I. Joe series and Sophie Campbell's uh, very popular, as far as I can tell, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. Both of those have been put on pause, and uh, I don't know if they're coming back. I don't know. I, I don't know if uh, has there been any solicitations for them. I have no idea. I don't think they're coming back, especially if they're laying people off. So this coming from Bleeding Cool. All right, Rich Johnston has actually kicked into journo mode in the last couple of weeks uh, with all the coronavirus news. Uh, so he's actually, as far as I can tell, being pretty unbiased, giving us facts. Uh, we had already learned that IDW Publishing had furloughed a number of employees and books had been put on hold as a result of the current global pandemic. But at a time when the industry is starting to revive and comic books are put back on schedule, that doesn't seem to be happening at IDW. Of course not. Just uh, beginning of the year, IDW lost $24.6 million in 2019. Uh, they were holding out. If you read their memos to shareholders, they were basically holding out for Netflix, holding out for streaming shows, and they got canceled. This is where they thought their money was going to come from. Basically, IDW was going to do a Platinum Studios, and they were going to use comic books to create IP, to create TV shows and movies from, and everything got canceled. Uh, Netflix is not renewing V Wars or October Faction. Uh, I don't know what's up with Winona Earp, but Lock and Key is getting a renewal. But that's it. And I don't know how much of that IDW actually gets to keep because Joe Hill, uh, you know, probably has a deal with them. It is creator owned. Uh, I don't know. But uh, not good. This is what they were banking on, right? So Bleeding Cool has been informed that about a dozen IDW employees were let go permanently by the publisher and broadcaster last week. Uh, names mentioned by sources so far include associate publisher David Hedgecock, uh, managing editor Denton Tipton, graphic artist Gilberto uh, Lascano, another graphic designer Krista uh, Meisner, Meisner, and brand and marketing manager Spencer Reeve. Bleeding Cool has reached out to the individuals without comment. Not surprisingly, as I understand that IDW has informed said employees they are not to talk to social media or do anything that might confirm their departure from the company because it's going to look bad to investors and it's going to lead to speculation. 
but they no longer appear on the staff directory on IDW's website. When we contacted IDW directly, they issued the following statement. In April, IDW made the difficult decision to furlough several valued staff members, and two weeks ago, IDW welcomed several of those staffers back. However, as we continue to adapt and deal with these challenging times, we have been forced to lay off some of our longtime coworkers and friends. Although tough decisions like this are an unfortunate business reality and there never is a good time for them, these changes are necessary to ensure the long-term health of the company. Uh, Bleeding Cool told you that IDW received over a million in Paycheck Protection Program loans. Uh, yeah, they did. They took a million dollars in Paycheck Protection loans. And then, like, right after that, they put the kibosh or put on pause, I guess, the Ninja Turtles and G.I. Joe books. Isn't that what the Paycheck Protection Program is for, is to stop them from having to lay off employees? I don't know. Uh, something, something's up with that. And we'll probably hear about it again. Who knows? In March, they had raised $12 million in the latest round of financing. They have also had stock price issues, too. Um, IDW is in trouble. They really are. And, and when we have a situation like this, like the pandemic, like, you know, weak businesses are going to be affected first. Comics is weak. IDW is one of the weakest of the, the top five publishers. I think they're in the top five right now. This is probably going to be it for them. If unless somebody else comes in, buys them, I don't know if, you know, like Hasbro would buy them outright. What's Hasbro going to do with a comic book publisher? You know, this is a company riddled with debt. It really doesn't have a lot of assets either. Um, most of what they do is licensed. You know, these licensees can go anywhere and get their stuff made. IDW has very little original IP and what little original IP they had uh, has been canceled. You know, I mean, what are they going to do? Lock and Key is about the only thing of value I think that IDW has at this point. Uh, 30 Days of Night, maybe, I don't know what they're doing with that. But um, I think this is it. Because, I mean, honestly, Hasbro can go to any publisher and get their books made. You know, they have Transformers, My Little Pony, Ghostbusters. Uh, they're doing Star Wars and Marvel books uh, for Marvel Comics. I think, as I understand it, Disney was testing the waters to see if they could just send their Marvel comics and their Star Wars comics to IDW and not have to have uh, a full staff and an office and all that jazz with Marvel comics, but IDW can't get shit together. So it's obviously not a good choice uh, right now. Again, this this shouldn't surprise anyone. It's disappointing because IDW has, you know, look, there's been a lot of controversy about some of their decisions. Uh, there's controversy about some of their employees on social media and some of the stuff they've been saying. Uh, there's controversy about their freelancers. Of course, you know, when we we're talking about G.I. Joe, we had that uh, debacle a couple of years ago with Aubrey Sitterson making some off-color remarks about 9-11. That blew up, and uh, G.I. Joe basically blew up, but they had the good sense to put, you know, Larry Hama, I guess, uh, back on the book. But um, they've had a really kind of a contentious uh, relationship with fans of various properties for various reasons. But there are a few bright spots. I mean, Turtles, I know, is really popular right now. I haven't read Larry Hama's G.I. Joe book, but it does look sufficiently uh, old school. Now, there was some controversy about, I guess, they had a, a teenage girl Snake Eyes a couple of years ago. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, but, I mean, a lot of their stuff has looked pretty solid. I know people that, that write over there and they actually do care about the properties. It's just, it, it really is a mixed bag. I mean, that's comics. Comics is a mixed bag. You get some good people, but the people you hear the most from, are, frankly, are the shitty people because they're the loudest. Yeah, but there are thousands of people working in the comic book industry, and uh, it, it seems like it's like the dirty dozen that you constantly hear about uh, in the media and on social media, you know, um, which is a bummer because... Personally, I like uh, I like my artists and writers to uh, just put out good work and let the work speak for itself. Sophie Campbell's always been very, very solid, you know, but uh, I don't know if they're coming back. I just don't I don't think they're going to. And I don't think IDW is going to survive this year, maybe next year. Maybe they'll get another year out of them. Who's going to buy a comic book company in this market? You know, uh, they failed at doing TV. Uh, who's going to buy a comic book company in debt? And they were talking last year, like a year and a half ago, uh, there was a suggestion by the board that IDW needs to sell. And they probably should have sold before this year because here we are. And I, I, there's just no, I don't see the, how they can come back. I have no idea. 
I have no idea how they're going to come back. Again, who's going to buy them? What would happen is the company would go out of business. Those uh, creator owned projects would just go to another publisher like Dark Horse. And, you know, the license stuff, again, they would just, you know, Hasbro would just send their book someplace else. You know, they don't have anything of value, really. Uh, not for not for the amount of money that they're hemorrhaging. Nobody's going to come in and be like, yeah, let's plunk down $100 million and turn IDW around so we can do more licensed comics uh, that are lucky if they sell 10 to 15,000 copies a month. It's just not going to work. So I think they're I think they're done. I think they're toast. Personal opinion. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Thinking about printing your own comic books, graphic novel, or manga? We recommend our friends over at Print Ninja. We've been using Print Ninja as long as they've been printing comics, and both the quality and price is excellent. Mention Clownfish TV and get an additional 5% overrun of your book order quantity printed for free. For free! That's free books, people. Just mention this offer on the phone or in the additional information box on the quote request form. That's printninja.com or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.